Climate finance is provided by public, private and philanthropic sources, mostly from developed regions like the US or Europe. Each of these regions have a certain set of eligibility criteria in the context of meaningful mitigation actions and transparency on implementation. They also have unique benefits and costs and their financing is usually distributed through a network of climate and developmental financial institutions and intermediaries. Now that we have a good grasp on where climate finance originates, we'll now next look at climate finance flows. From this diagram, we can see that climate finance typically flows from the international source to development finance institutions or DFIs, then from these DFIs through to financial intermediaries, and then finally to beneficiaries. What sets climate funds and DFIs apart from commercial banks is that DFIs don't only take returns on investment into consideration, they also look at factors like job creation, gender equality, youth employment, and the public good of diversifying the economy. DFIs essentially de-risk or reduce the amount of risk associated with projects directed towards development goals. Through the provision of concessional funding, offered at below market interest rates or over longer periods. Examples of climate funds and DFIs active in South Africa are the World Bank, Multilateral Development Banks, the Green Climate Fund, the Global Environment Facility and the Adaptation Fund. Large DFIs such as the Green Fund usually support many different countries and are therefore referred to as multilateral providers. However, there are also international climate financing agreements which take place between two countries, which are referred to as bilateral agreements. For example, South Africa has bilateral climate financing agreements with the Flanders government as well as Germany and a host of other countries. The next important group of players in the system are the financial intermediaries. International climate funds are provided as very large sums of money, such as billions of rands. However, very few projects are big enough to absorb or make use of such large amounts of money. These funds therefore distribute the money to intermediaries in different sectors and countries who disperse this in terms of their mandates into smaller portions. These intermediaries can be agencies, or national development finance institutions. In South Africa, the Department of Environment, Forestry and Fisheries is the primary national intermediary. But it has previously delegated this mandate to the Development Bank of Southern Africa and the South African National Biodiversity Institute. These intermediaries often put together programs based on sectors such as waste management, embedded energy generation, or ecosystem-based adaptation, to name a few. Financial intermediaries then distribute financing to beneficiaries on the ground. If successful in their proposal bids, beneficiaries are able to undertake the specific projects or activities associated with climate change adaptation and mitigation. In addition to local governments, project developers, non-profit organizations, and communities are also implementers of climate finance. The work that is carried out by these groups ultimately benefits citizens and vulnerable groups. Let's look at a South African example of this flow of money. South Africa, through the Department of Forestry, Fisheries, and the Environment, or DFFE, was able to access financing through the Global Adaptation Fund. DFFE delegated the responsibility of dispersing these funds to accredited entities, namely the Development Bank of Southern Africa and South African National Biodiversity Institutes. These accredited entities then release calls for proposals from project implementers who will become the beneficiaries of these funds. 
municipalities were expected to apply to access this climate finance. It is common for municipalities to be assisted by partnering institutions to develop joint proposals, which can then be submitted to intermediaries. However, it's also possible for beneficiaries such as local municipalities, to approach international intermediaries directly without going through the DFFE. There are a number of international intermediaries who have a mandate to support climate change projects at a sub-national level. One of the most valuable portals for assisting officials in project preparation is a Green City Finance Directory. This directory helps sub-national governments and stakeholders identify project preparation facilities that can assist cities by supporting activities in the project preparation stage of the project cycle with the goal of successfully connecting with finance. Now is a good time to bookmark this web address for later use.